Hello and welcome to today's very special event webinar. Today we're launching our new video conferencing platform. This platform has been designed to help you and your teams connect faster and easier and when it comes to virtual collaboration, there's really nothing else like it. So today we're going to pass it on to Kurt Dusen, who's the Sales Manager at Redback Conferencing and many of you may be familiar with him. So without any further ado, how are you today, Kurt? Yeah, good. Thank you, Sarah. A great introduction. Thank you very much and, and welcome everybody to uh, the first webinar on our, our new product launch for, for Sivo, which is a, a cloud-based video conferencing product. Um, what we'll cover today, we'll spend some time before we get started really and um, clarify what we mean when we say cloud with respect to video conferencing and, and that really will then provide the basis for us to spend a, a short amount of time um, talking about the different types of video conferencing and then on to the case for cloud video um, before we get into what we're here to see, which is a little bit more information around uh, the newest addition to our collaboration suite, which is now telephone conferencing, web conferencing and, and video, cloud-based video, uh, and some of the really cool things that our, our tech team have been working on with the folks at Sivo um, to bring you quite an exciting product. Um, moving on, let me get the next slide for us. Okay, so let's start first with, with what cloud video conferencing is not, and, and that it's not, a, it's not a hosted video bridging service. So to talk about quickly what a video bridging service is, um, it, it's often where servers are hosted elsewhere and supported or managed by a third party. And some of you who have um, video conferencing hardware endpoints, boardroom video conferencing, the likes of Polycom or Cisco Tanberg or LifeSize, uh, may have video bridging service providers. So this is what we are not. Um, it, it, those video conferencing service providers may or may not go out through or, or provide their services over the public internet. And, and typically it's, it's scheduled, um, it's fairly expensive, it requires plenty of notice, um, it's managed by someone else, and you need to have the Polycom or the Tanberg or the life-size video conferencing endpoints. So I'm mentioning uh, what video conferencing or cloud video conferencing is not. Um, if you were hoping I was then going to give you a definitive answer to what it is, um, you might be disappointed because it is a, a very mixed or uh, no one definition kind of term. I must have really wanted to make that point because no one definition is in there twice. Um, but what cloud should do is it, it should support your endpoint, and when I talk about your endpoint, I'm, I'm talking about any video uh, enabled device. It should support any video enabled de device, and I put BYOD there, uh, bring your own device. Um, it's typically hardware free, although there are a number of solutions now that are a hybrid where I can buy a server, um, I can buy video conferencing equipment from the manufacturer, yet all of the video bridging is done in the cloud in order to bring about the benefits that cloud video bridging have. Um, recently, earlier this year, uh, I attended a Unified Communications and Collaboration Conference in San Francisco, um, and a term that was brought up by Wayne House Research, who are a leading global research organization around collaboration services, um, I thought was a good one to share. Um, a cloud video service is commonly a hosted service uh, powered by technology in numerous locations that work together to create a, a single coherent service fabric. And that is exactly what the Sivo cloud product is uh, that we've installed here in Sydney. So transitioning over to the case for the cloud, um, the great thing about uh, cloud video conferencing, um, good cloud video conferencing, is, is you can choose your own endpoint. So um, many of you will already have Link. Um, you have Android devices, iOS devices, uh, some may even have boardroom Polycom units or boardroom Cisco uh, Tanberg units. Um, it doesn't really matter. You can use any endpoint to connect with anybody else on any other endpoint. Uh, cloud video conferencing is also about outsourcing um, the reliability, the scalability and the redundancy challenge uh, to an outside provider. So um, there's a lot involved in putting together a reliable video conferencing solution, uh, being able to scale that to meet the needs of a large organization and support multiple people connected at the same time, um, and having multiple points of redundancy or failover so that mission critical meetings aren't interrupted. 
Um, you will achieve the best performance versus cost ratio, if you like. So for the, for the outlay or the cost of your video conferencing, um, as a ratio against the performance that you're receiving, um, cloud video conferencing really can't be beaten. Um, the great thing about cloud video conferencing is it's, it's usually browser-based or application-based. So it's designed for the average user. So I'm getting to the point of ease of use here. So designed for the average user and not designed to need a, an IT person, an administrator, a help desk in order to support it. So I can connect from any device and, and it's very, very easy to use. Um, alluded to earlier, no CapEx, very much an OpEx model. Um, I can pay as I go and just avoiding that server maintenance, my equipment maintenance other than my devices that I use to connect. So, um, yeah, there we go. So you don't become a video conferencing company and I think that's one of the big drivers for outsourcing in general is that I don't want to become the, the service provider of the service I use. Um, let's put it in the cloud, let's have somebody else worry about that and I'll use it on demand as and, as and when I need to. Um, again, so, so this here was taken um, at the UCNC, the Unified Communications and Collaboration Conference, um, and it was a slide that as a sales manager I, I really took notice of. Um, it was during the cloud video conferencing presentation, and uh, I'll, I'll read it out because it's really quite interesting if you're looking at video conferencing products. Despite the focus on video and audio quality, Winehouse Research believed the important differences are not in video and audio quality, the key differentiators are around ease of use, uh, convenience, accessibility, the workflow of the service, and specifically the attitude of your provider towards solving your problems. And so as a buyer, as people out there consuming video conferencing services, the key questions that you should be asking include how quickly can one start a meeting, how easily can one invite additional attendees, and, and how easy is it for them to connect, and then how well does the service, the video conferencing platform, integrate with the tools that we use every day? And I thought that was really interesting because it shifted my thinking as a, as a service provider. We were soon to become a, a video conferencing service provider around uh, the kinds of questions that we think that we're solving. So uh, asking that question again, are all video conferencing solutions the same? Um, the, the questions that we're going to try and answer in the next 15 or 20 minutes um, uh, how are meetings initiated? How are video conferencing meetings initiated by our cloud service? How firewall or proxy friendly is it? Because that's going to have a lot of impact around how easy it is for your, both yourself as, as well as those clients, vendors, other stakeholders to join. Um, the client and the, and the software installation, what's involved and where can I get my apps from for my mobile devices? Uh, integration with your existing systems. Um, and then uh, the devices that are supported, which is pretty easy because it's all devices. Um, and is it self-serve? And, and when we ask is it self-serve, is it easy to use? Or, or, or do I need to set up a help desk in order to introduce video conferencing into my business? So, in, in summary, um, I think the message that came, I came away with from the conference and, and the message that I'm relaying today is that with video conferencing, particularly in the cloud where it's not based around boardroom video conferencing, is that convenience trumps everything else. If we're going to introduce video conferencing, and I know there's a lot of um, very expensive video conferencing hardware in boardrooms around Australia and around the world that's gathering dust, um, so convenience really trumps everything. Is it very, very easy for... Uh, my team and the people they're going to be inviting to their meetings in order to connect and get their message across, have their meeting. Okay, so in, into SIVO. So um, now it's time to talk a little bit about uh, some of the unique uh, features and, and functionality that we have. Um, some of the things that um, we've been doing over the past 12 months. Um, we've had this installed here, Amazon um, in Australia for, for about 12 months and tinkering away, uh, producing a product that we're now commercialising. Um, so all very, very exciting. So if we ask, answer the question first of um, how we initiate a meeting, and for those of you that are familiar with Redback or already have a, a Redback account, um, you're familiar with the moderator and participant code, which is very much a, a teleconferencing methodology. 
Um, but what it means is you have a persistent meeting codes. Uh, you can connect instantly via either a URL, um, and you can see the URL there, so feel free to visit that and you'll see essentially what, what the image depicts a moderator and a participant. What it means is I have a moderator and participant code that is unique to me. It doesn't change. I can have a video conference whenever I like. I can either launch my video conference from an app on my desktop or an app on my mobile device, both Android or iOS, um, and I conference instantly. So that does away with the traditional scheduling systems, and that takes a little bit of people getting used to. So the idea of having to schedule or having to make a reservation um, is, a, is a thing of the past. Um, so that's answering how, how I first initiate the meeting myself. I have my own unique moderator code. It's the same moderator code that I use to initiate a telephone conference, same code to initiate a web conference, and, and as of this month, for our customers, it'll be the same moderator code that they can use to initiate a high-definition cloud-based video conference. Um, the second part of that question that was asked at the, the Wayne House Research Summit, um, how easy is it to invite others? And, and we'll say super easy. So again, very similar to how I initiate my own meeting, I have a unique persistent meeting ID um, for a moderator code, and I have a corresponding participant code. So again, similar to the, the, the web conference, if, you've, if you're a customer of Redbacks now, you know how you join your web conference. It's almost identical in that I go to a URL, I plug in my participant code, and I connect. Uh, because it's, a, it's an application-driven uh, service, there is a installation to take place, and once I've installed that, um, I'll have an application on my desktop, and that was the image we saw on the last slide. So I can open that application and put in my participant code, or I can go to the URL and put in my participant code, and I connect instantly. So very few clicks, very, very easy. If I am inviting somebody from uh, a boardroom who has a Polycom unit, so that is an H323 or a, a SIP video conferencing device, and, and the typical vendors, as mentioned earlier, are the, the Polycoms, the Cisco Tanbergs, uh, the life size. Um, I have what's called a, a SIP string, and that's essentially an address that's made up of my participant code, like an IP address, and that can be dialed from the Polycom into my meeting room. Or alternatively, if I'm inviting a participant who's sitting in a Polycom-like boardroom, I can simply dial their IP address straight out of my SIVO meeting, and they'll connect and come in as a, as a participant. Um, joining via the phone line. So we think this was uh, something that was very, very important in the Australian marketplace. Um, low bandwidth, uh, people on the move, uh, people in areas where they don't have internet connectivity. I can participate in a group video conference via a phone line. So I can call in on my mobile, I can call in on my desktop phone, and I can speak and hear the video conference taking place. And I thought worth, worth a mention here, and we'll, we'll come to talk about this a little more shortly, is it's single port technology. Um, and what that means is there's only one port required for all video traffic. So that means it's a departure from the traditional video conferencing um, network configuration where I needed to open 15, 20, possibly 30 different ports in order to make my video conference work. So there was no way I could do that without the, uh, the involvement of, of IT and of our network security provider or our firewall manager. So with, with the SIVO product, um, it will scan one of five ports, uh, it will scan all five ports, find one that's open and all video traffic can run through that port. So again, that lends itself to making it very, very easy for both yourself and those that you're meeting with in order to connect and, and not encounter any difficulties. Um, so let's discuss some of the specific features that, that we're certainly excited about. Um, there are a few of them, um, many of which we, we didn't see. So we, we went out to the market and we asked similar questions um, around video conferencing platforms. Um, we see ourselves as a best of breed provider. So we're looking for the best possible product that we can source globally. Um, we can bring that to Australia, we can host our own instance of it, um, and we can then um, essentially make that available to Australian educational corporates, not-for-profits, um, whoever's in, in need of video conferencing. Uh, so the first one here is, is what's called multi-monitor support. Now, we can see this in any other cloud-based video conferencing platform. 
what it essentially means is that I can undock, if I have my laptop plugged into another screen or another six screens, I'm able to undock a video tile, which is one of the participants in my meeting. I can undock that, relocate it onto another screen, and then maximize it to fill the screen. And at high definition, at 720 or, or 1080p, which is the, the definition, the pixels, um, I get a true telepresence feel in my boardroom that I'm running out of a cloud-based video conferencing software. So I haven't invested tens of thousands of dollars in endpoints per boardroom. Um, I simply have a laptop with a number of screens, and I'm able to get that telepresence feel, as you can see on the left-hand side. Um, for those of you in Sydney, we've set up our boardroom, a, a video conferencing um, demonstration lab, you might call it. And so we have six screens on the wall. And so anybody interested in seeing that is more than welcome to come to our office and, and we'll give you a full demo of how that works. Um, second one here, so Sevo's roots are, are firmly um, in the, the higher education sector. So Sevo was a product that was developed in Caltech University. Uh, by researchers. It's actually used by a number of universities and higher education organizations ac across Australia in the world. Um, I'm leading into here the fact that it has multi-desktop sharing. So very much a research or an educational feature, but we think that transitions quite well into the, the corporate world as well. So with traditional web uh, desktop sharing, with, with web conferencing, there's, there's one panel, similar to the interface that we're, we've logged into now. There's one panel and we would essentially take turns at desktop sharing. So with Sevo, uh, the, the desktops show up like video windows. So I'm able to share my desktop, the person I'm meeting with can share their desktop, we can see both of them at the same time, and there's actually no limit to the number of desktops or, or video windows um, that we can have. We'll, we'll come to that in a moment. Um, so that's a quite, a quite a funky tool um, when it is about the content, and we're making comparisons or looking at each other's materials. Just on what you were talking about before, Kurt, um, John's got a question, and if we can just go back to this. Um, can participants of the video of video conferencing be a mixture of those linking in via the internet and some linking in by phone as well? Yes. Yes. Yes, correct. So um, bring your own device. If I was to initiate a meeting, um, I would send out my participant code. Um, I could have... Um, a link to the applications for either iOS or Android. Um, actually, I'll just put, provide a link to the URL, and, and on the URL page, it will ask them what device they're joining from. Here's a phone number. Here is a, uh, a link to the iTunes store. Here is a link to the Play Store for Android. Or if you're coming in on the desktop, here is uh, just, just plug the number in, and you can join from the URL. Um, or if you're joining from a Polycom or a Cisco Tamburg, here's my SIP string. You can join via that. Long way around to saying yes. yes. <laughs> um, low bandwidth options. So with uh, any individual participant can control their own individual layout of the meeting room. So you can see on the ones above, individual participants come in on their own what we call video tile or, or window. So in those situations where I have restricted bandwidth, um, I'm able to opt for a meeting room layout that's called, we call it a single mosaic, and you can see that in the bottom left. Essentially what it is, is it's one video window that pulls all, uh, all of my participants into that one video window, and therefore it's only consuming the bandwidth of one participant. So I can force my meeting or, or my, my view into that mode, um, but with Sevo and the technology, it also has a, a patented network detection for low bandwidth, and it will drop your video tiles into one single mosaic if it detects that your bandwidth can't support multiple windows. So that is the mode that you see when you log in via a mobile device, uh, but it's also the mode that you will default to or you can opt for when you're coming on your PC if you don't have high bandwidth. So it's, it, it's really, really good out in low bandwidth locations, wireless internet and, and other situations. Um, recording to a local PC, um, another very unique feature, and I think uh, something that comes out of the higher education um, uh, routes that Sevo has. So I'm able to record my video conference at the click of a button, very, very easy. It saves the file down to my desktop, 
And then with the icon here, I've, I've taken a, a screen grab of the what we call the Sevo Player, and that's essentially a, a small software package that I can view my recording, I can make edits to my recording, and I can then push it to an MP4 or a flash file or any other file format that I require the final uh, file to be in. Um, so that education, um, presentation, application for your video conferences, very, very easy to record it. The moderator only can record it. Very easy to record the video conference, save it to my desktop, make edits, and then I could upload it to my intranet, to my website, or to anywhere else. And it's a great, easy way to, to be making video content or for people that have missed the meeting in order you know, for them to, to tune into it a little later. Uh, more on features, one more page of features here. Uh, the firewall, firewall traversal technology. So. Um, I'll talk very quickly about this because uh, I've already mentioned it. It's Sevo it, scans one of five ports, and one of those ports is port 80, which is your typical internet port that is used by all of your internet traffic coming to and from your organisation. So what it, what it means is that if port 80 is open to internet traffic, or sorry, video conferencing traffic, then there's no configuration, special network configuration required by your IT team. Um, so that that's, makes it very, very easy. Um, the other, perhaps I can put a link in here. Um, again, going back to going back to the education background of Sevo, and I'm going to paste the link into um, the chat box here for anybody who wants more information on the integration with Moodle, which is a learning management system. So what it allows is for a um, an instructor. Actually, maybe I can't. Here we go. It allows for an instructor um, of, of a course who's using Moodle um, to launch their video conferencing um, classroom straight out of the Moodle interface. And it pulls all of the reporting back into the Moodle interface. So you're able to uh, record or capture or know uh, which students have been in which meetings. Now that's only going to be of interest to those organizations um, universities, education, institutes, associations that are using Moodle as their learning management system. Um, and the last two here that we think are quite exciting is um, the video conference has the ability to move into something that is more akin to a webinar or a webcast. So think town hall, think classroom, think company update, where I can have the presenter presenting. Um, they could even be sitting in front of their Polycom unit because the Polycom could be the endpoint. And that can go out to up to 50 participants. And I can introduce cameras or introduce screen, screen sharing from those that are attending as they speak or share content. So we, we didn't see another video conferencing system that could support up to 50 participants. So really quite unique. Um, and the last one to talk about here, and I'm sure this is what everybody wants to understand, is, is the commercial models. So having our roots in a, being a teleconferencing business, um, telephone and web conferencing and having the option for no upfront commitment, no contracts, no license models, um, we've, made it, we've made it accessible via the moderator and the participant code on a pay-as-you-go per minute, very similar to a teleconferencing model. Um, and then for the what we might call more of the serious user or a um, someone who's going to use a lot more video conferencing, there is the typical license model where I can pay for X number of concurrent connections. Um, that are shared across my business. So I can have an unlimited number of users. We can use it an unlimited amount of time for an unlimited amount of time, and I'm paying for a number of concurrent connections. And so that's it from me, folks, on the product promotion piece. Uh, would certainly love to talk to you more about um, some of the other unique features, more, more on these, um, if you are evaluating video conferencing at the moment. Um, I think I do have one more slide here, which is really um, a summary slide of the, the big questions that um, we can certainly ask for you and that you might want to be asking video conferencing vendors in your assessment of video conferencing solutions. And that is uh, how quickly uh, can you connect? How many clicks in order to join your video conference? How easy is it to use? Which can really only be determined by a trial. Um, how quickly can I invite, inviting my participants? And how will it integrate with the existing platforms that I have? or the existing collaboration solutions that I already use. Uh, how will it work in Australia? Where are the servers located? Um, will it work through my firewall? So getting a good understanding of the ports that are required in order to 
um, have a fully functional video conference. Um, will it really work on any device? Um, will it really work on both mobile and Android? Will, is it, um, are all f features and functionality going to work on those mobile devices? Um, and, and what is the end user support? So what level of support can I expect from my vendor in evaluating the video or in, in using the video conferencing product? And so that truly is it for me now, everybody. Uh, thank you for your time. Okay, we've just got a few questions that we're going to go to um, and I'm also just going to launch a quick survey which is located on the right hand side of your screen. So very much appreciate it if you complete that. Um, so first of all, we've got a question from Ross Kurt. So what does the SIP string look like? Yeah, sure. Um, why don't I put an example in the chat facility here? Mm -hmm. And maybe uh, if you can just elaborate for people online who may not be familiar with what a SIP string is. Um, and then we can all sort of understand their response. Sure, sure. Uh, I'm just finishing typing out an example SIP string here um, in the chat box. So the SIP string will be your participant code. So the same participant code that you would use if you were coming in through the browser or coming in through an app. Um, at GW for gateway, which is the cloud video conferencing gateway, uh, .sevo.com. So everybody's is the same. In, in, in that the participant code varies, but it's always the participant code at gw.sevo.com. Okay, great. And Ross has also just mentioned that he has life size endpoints. So yeah. same for all. So, so yep. the, well, the, the consideration, Ross, would be um, do you have an external uh, IP address for those video conferencing units? Are they able to conference with the outside world? Or can they only conference with other uh, life size units that you have across your different sites? So um, yeah, c can they go out through the firewall? Um, can they talk to the outside world? If they can, then they can certainly bridge to us. Okay, great. And this is probably um, a good question from Kelly, just moving into the pricing slide as well. So how will the cost compare between the AV conferencing and the teleconferencing options that they already have? So maybe we can speak about some pricing options? Yeah, sure. Um, if, if I'm understanding that question correctly, um, how does the video conferencing compare to the telephone conferencing? Um, same price. So it is the same permanent per participant rate um, that you have negotiated for your teleconferencing. That extends over to your video conferencing. So for the end user, um, it takes the, um, the cost benefit, um, the consideration around what's this going to cost me out of the equation, and they simply use the technology that's going to best fit the requirements of their meeting that day of what they're trying to achieve. Mm, great. Um, and for Mary, and I might just um, maybe type something else in the chat box if I don't understand this one correctly, Mary. So are all calls dependent on a moderator? Can I ring a phone from one user to another? So I'm guessing, uh, Mary, if your question is asking, do you have to be a moderator to start a video conference? Yeah. Which I assume is correct. Yes, correct. So um, similar to the phone or the web conference that you may be familiar with, a moderator needs to log in and when that moderator logs in, they, they, they initiate a meeting. So a meeting room is then created that others with a participant code are able to connect to. So you mentioned about a phone dial-in. So if I was to be phoning in with my telephone, it would say that the conference has not begun yet if the moderator was not there. So I join with the moderator code, opens the meeting room, and then people on all different kinds of devices are then able to connect. Great. Um, and just also on John's question, I'm just going to go back to this slide just so we can talk about desktop sharing. So when video conferencing, is there the ability to share presentations so that all participants can see the same presentations on their screens? Yeah, absolutely. So that is desktop sharing. And I'm just going to highlight here multiple desktop sharing. So. Um, if only I was to share my desktop, then everybody would see what it was that I was sharing. Um, going beyond that, um, multiple desktops can be displayed at the same time. But yes, those, any desktop that is displayed is viewable to everybody in the meeting room. Okay, great. Um, and I think one other question, just based on some of the feedback that was coming through the registration process, um, and also for some people online who have been using web conferencing and teleconferencing for some time now, from your experience um, and from the people who have been trialing the system, um, what do you, what, what are the drivers? Why would someone using video, web conferencing want to switch over to 
desktop video conferencing? Uh, someone who's using, yeah, well, I think it's people want to see those that they're meeting with. Um, the level of engagement or interaction um, is, is the driver or the desire to have a higher level of engagement and a higher level of interaction um, in team meetings is the driver for video conferencing. Um, also, the, the requirement to be able to share content and collaborate on that and mark it up and really get the message across, I think, is one of the big drivers. Uh, being able to have people on the same page to uh, reach decisions, good decisions, faster would be some of the reasons I would think that people are looking to video conferencing. Um, the other thing would be uh, I've got a huge investment in my hardware, in my life size, or my Polycom or my Tamburg, um, and I need to leverage that and bring people in from mobile devices or desktop, make it easier to use and make it more of a universal system as opposed to only being able to connect to other video conferencing um, hardware boardrooms. Okay, good. That's a good wrap up. Um, and I can see a few more people are typing, but just um, to close off today, if you are interested in seeing the product online to obviously see how it works, but also see how it can integrate with what you're currently using, um, I've just posted a link and I'll post that again into the um, chat box. But also on the right hand side in the survey, please feel free to um, tick yes please in the last box and then we can hop online with you at any given time and show you how the platform works. Um, so also just a few more questions to wrap up, Kurt. So from Kelly, can video participants change the size of each Display. So, for example, a particular person um, or desktop as they wish to view throughout. Uh, can they change the size of a video tile? Well, so if I'm a participant on a video conference, can I choose whether or not to see a person or whether or not to see the desktop sharing? Uh, you'll see all. You'll always see all. Okay. Uh, but what, one of the great things, and, and maybe I, I didn't explain this uh, very well, was I am able to undock uh, the video window from from the application, if you like. So I've got the application open on my desktop. I can undock a person that I'm talking to, and when it, it's almost like take them out of the video conferencing application and move them onto another screen. So I can always see everyone in my meeting, and I can always see every desktop that's being shared. But I can take one of those and enlarge it if I'd like to, and that's from a um, individual end user standpoint. So each person in the video conference controls their own uh, room layout or environment. Mm. Okay, that's good to know. Um, and just also on people out there wondering as well, I think Mark's made, made a really good point about why video conference. Um, the fact that over 80% of communication is transmitted visually um, is something that I think a lot of people miss with online methods of communication. Um, so Joe and Kurt having a conversation there just around the app that you're discussing. Um, so he's asked whether or not connecting from a smartphone or tablet is available via an app or a web page. So you just need to visit the iTunes store or the Play Store. And what's that called? The app? Oh, the app is Sivo. Oh, yeah. Sivo. <laughs> if you Great. search, if you search uh, S W -E V O G H, there it is right there. Mm -hmm. um, you can install that from both the iTunes or the Play Store for Android or Apple, um, and it's the same participant code that you would use that you already have. I know, Joe, you're already a video conferencing user with us. Uh, same participant code you'd use through the browser, you can use that through the app. Excellent. Um, all right, well, that brings us to the end. Uh, I personally would love to thank everyone for joining today. Um, it's great to see so many people interested in this product that we're all very excited about. I'd like to thank Kurt for hosting today. I think um, we've all been given some great insights into the case for video conferencing and the product itself. Um, and, uh, you know, we'd like to see you at future Business Skills series. So thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, keep an eye out for the recording, which will be sent in 48 hours. And please feel free to get in touch with us. Um, anything regarding the product itself, pricing, um, if, you can, if you want to see it online, feel free to get us in touch, get in touch. And we look forward to seeing you at future events. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Bye.